Hey, it's Emmanuel from Sumo to Six Pack Abs, and it's day 35. It's literally been 30 days since I posted my first video, a little bit longer since I started on this kind of focused journey. And yeah, getting ready to do my day 30 check-in two days from now. I'm going to be getting another DEXA scan, see how the last 30 days have gone. I'm feeling pretty good about the metrics, about 10 pounds down. I measured in today at 240.7, probably about two inches down on my waist. My ketosis measurements have been strong all month. My um, eating has been good, pretty strong. I've dabbled in fasts, and that's actually what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, the my decision on fasting. And uh, overall, I feel much more confident, much stronger. I've been getting my exercise in. I've had a couple sedentary days. Honestly enough, it's been weird. I've been so productive. I just realized it's just now. Actually, I actually haven't watched hardly any TV at all. And I'm a big TV, movies type of guy. I just literally have been working nonstop. If I'm not working out, I'm working. I've closed all my rings every day. Like it's just been a solid month. And I have this to thank. Every day I'm jumping on doing a story. I know that's coming up in the morning. So it's helped me really get through the fasting. I've been able to do two three-day fasts and several one-day fasts on Mondays. I've just been consistently doing that, which has been new for me. And I've been eating pretty much. I think I went grocery shopping at the beginning of this thing, and that's it. I just went grocery shopping today. So once a month grocery shopping. I like that. Don't use up too much gas. Don't have to leave the house very often and brave COVID. It's, uh, it's been a good experience, and um, I'm looking forward to month two and month three, right? Discussion point for today. So big thing, changing my mind a bit on fasting. So one, that was one of the big things that I was like, I think I'm going to try this. I think it would work well for me. And there's a lot of pros and cons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give why I decided to do it, what I thought were going to be some of the risks doing it, and then I'm going to talk about my most recent fast and why it's confirming my decision to stop these longer fasts. And then what I'm going to do instead, which is going to be basically the shorter fast. So first and foremost, the reasons why I wanted to do it, what I really enjoy is about the idea of a fast is it's just flat out black and white. You just don't eat. It's one of the reasons why I like keto, right? Keto, to me, it's simple. There's a number They're in ketosis or out. If I'm out in ketosis, I'm burning fat. So as long as I'm working out or using more energy than my body needs, it will have to tap into stored reserves if I'm in ketosis. I love that. It's, it's very clear. It's very precise, right? There's no counting calories. There's no f meal prepping and planning, none of that stuff. So I love it. It's one of the things that attracted me to it. Just stop eating. Stop putting stuff in your mouth. So that's one of the reasons why I liked it. Also, it's, it very much is a reset, Right. It helps you, or at least that was what was sold to me, was you reset your taste buds. If you're used to eating a certain way, you can just stop eating. And all those cravings, all those things you really want all the time that are more mental than anything, all that starts to go away. You don't have to be ruled by food anymore. And on top of that, not just your cravings get uh, reset and your taste buds get reset, but your hunger signals too. So it actually becomes simpler to know, when are you actually really truly hungry and want food? And when is it more of an emotional or physical trigger, which really came into play this weekend where I had a really big blowout with, uh, with my significant other and uh, and partner in crime. And we just had it out and I, I was just hungry nonstop. But I could tell, I could see what the difference was because I had done the fast. I knew, oh, wait a minute, I'm not actually hungry. I just want to eat. Because eating is comforting for me. It's, it's comfort food, right? That's just an activity, something to pass time. It's mindless. It's just one of the things I do. It helped me stave off the worst of, of that and I actually ended up doing heavy hands instead. So I was really proud of that. And it really, fasting fits with how I eat. Ketosis and keto really intrigued me because as long as you pick the right type of food, fats or fatty foods, you don't have to sit and count calories. You just eat as much as you want until you're full. You just until you're done, even if you feel like overeating and it's a mental thing versus being hungry, like, yeah, I'm just going to binge today. Then binge. So what? And after a while, you realize, oh, I'm tired of binging. I actually want to lose some weight. And you can only eat so many steaks. You can only eat so much bacon. <laughs> it will stop. Not like candy. You'll get, eat yourself sick. 
on candy and cakes and donuts and desserts. You can definitely keep going until you're forced to stop by an outside event, passing out, falling over, keeling over, running out. It just keeps you going. Whereas with keto, at some point you're just done chewing the gristle on a big beef or ribeye steak, right? I just enjoy it. So this fits that idea, right? So you you stop fasting, then you just eat as much as you want. You get back, you refeed, and then you get back into ketosis or or get back into the keto way of eating. And you just eat. So I really enjoy it. It, it fit, right? I was like, ah, it's very attractive to me. And in terms of managing ketosis, it helps you get back in there quicker and get higher into ketosis. So you slip into autophagy, right? That was the other thing that kind of really prompted me. It was like I I used to hover a lot around 0.3, 0.4, 0.7, 0.5, 0.2, 0.6, 0.4, 0.5. And it was just like, I just want to be solidly in it. You stop eating for a day, bang, you're up at the 1.2s, the 1.3, the 2.1s, boom, it goes up. Because the reason why, to me, and there's not, you know, I talked to my coach Joe Dillon about this, it's not really a major benefit to being further and further and deeper into ketosis. But to me, the benefit, it, there is a benefit in the sense that if somehow I happen to go to a wedding or go visit family or what triggered this whole thing back on day one, if I'm higher in ketosis, two, three, four, I don't fall as far if I happen to make a mistake or mess up. I don't have to dig myself out of as big of a hole. For example, when I was hovering around the 0.5s and the 0.4s and I'd have a weekend like that or a meal like that, I'm down at 0.1 immediately. I'm completely out and it takes me a week or two to get back in. If I'm at 2, 3, when I go into that, by the next day or two maybe I'm back in without having to fast, without any of that. It's better for me to stay there. So I, I plan to still keep it the one days. And then also it really can supercharge fat loss. If you add in aerobic training or working out while you're fasting, it's just fast. The weight just falls off. Okay. And obviously the benefits of autophagy, right? So this idea was one of the ones that I hit on and started researching right before I got into to this 30 days, right? I was like, I think I like that. I like that idea. And primarily because I'm losing weight, I have a lot of excess skin. And they talked about how fasting will eat excess tissue. So I'm really hoping, really, to be honest with you, I just don't want a bunch of excess flabbiness and skin and all those things. So I'm hoping that fasting will fix some of that. All right. So some of the bad things that I heard about it is you're going to lose lean body mass as well. Like defeats the whole purpose because now your resting metabolic rate goes down. So when you stop fasting, your body needs less food to live off of. So the more, if you eat what you ate before you went to the fast, you're going to be putting on weight, not just maintaining, which was just like, that's frustrating. So that was a risk. Okay. But to me, I'm going to check that. So I did, I think two, three day fast since I did my last exercise. So we'll see how much body weight, lean body mass that I lose. I've done a couple fasts, one day fast as well. So we'll see. And then maintain keto. And then the weight will come right back on. You lose four or five pounds, a pound a day, real quick and easy, but it comes right back because it's all water weight. As soon as you rehydrate, as soon as you refeed, all that's coming right back. Like, yeah, I was worried. The lower resting metabolic rate, that was another one that worried me. And then not just that, that not just will you lose muscle, but you'll actually lose valuable tissue. And this is one of the ones I was talking with my coach Joe Dillon today about this, especially on the longer term ones. The 30-day, 40-day, all those, now you're starting to lose really vital tissue, not just muscle, not just excess skin, but like liver, heart, lung, brain tissue. Like You may get into a situation where you can't recover. Your body cannot recover. You think people in concentration camps back in the day, right? How did the ones that survived, how did they were severely malnutritioned, did they ever get their health back? Those are some pretty extreme risks. That's also the last reason why it's, "Ah, I probably shouldn't do 30 day fast and the reason is I'm drawn to extremes I'm that kind of guy black and white I'm either all in or not uh, pedal to the metal they're going to take the gold I'm going to take the pennant win the race or crash into the wall that's just who I am how I'm built and it feeds into that kind of paranoia I've got a very addictive personality like I'm all in like when I get hooked hard if I were to this could be just another drug 30 days and I just go too far with it 40 days 50 days 60 days why not just keep going 300 days who knows what it could be but not the kind of thing I want right now and uh, yeah so I'm not going to do the longer term one okay 
or even uh, three days anymore. So I don't think I'll do the three days anymore. Here's what I figured. I just finished a three day. Here's some things that happened. I really enjoyed the feeling of being not necessarily hungry, but there was this gnawing hunger. I wasn't wanting, craving food, but I was wanting food. And I could tell my stomach was like, give me food. And I was like, no, you're not going to have it. And it just felt shrunk and it was like, fine. And it would just shrink up. And it was nice because all day long, there was this constant reminder that I'm not eating. I'm not going to eat. You know, and accepted it. And who knows where I was getting this nutrition from. But my body was just like, man, we could use some more of this. And it allowed me mentally, when I would look at food, and this is one of the benefits I didn't hear a lot of, but mentally it allowed me to build and strengthen my willpower. Because when I would look at food, especially things that I would want to eat, and be like, am I willing to overcome all the work I just did for the last one day, two day, three days of fasting for this one bite? Do I really want to ruin that? And it gave me this, these, this easy measuring scale to say it's just not worth it. And I would just put it down. So willpower wise, it gave me a bigger why, a bigger reason to overcome that craving, to overcome that, which I normally don't have. Usually if I walk by something and I see a snack, I'll just grab it and eat it. It's just non-thinking. But and because there's nothing stopping me, I really nothing really other than willpower. And if the willpower isn't strong, why not just eat it? So with this pain, this hunger, this feeling, this tightness, around my midsection, around my body, it felt nice to have that around me as a reminder. You're not eating right now, so don't eat it. So the second thing that was, it was a weird, I had a weird situation where my, I felt exhausted on the third day. I was like, man, I just want this to be over. I felt tired. I felt cold. Blood pressure seemed low. It was 104 over 76. And then I measured it again later. It was 100 over 59. And I was just flat out exhausted all day. And that's when I was like, yeah, I think, I think I'm going to end it. I'm not going to go in. Because I had considered maybe doing a five-day. Because once you get into it, you get into it, it just becomes routine. And that didn't sit well with me. So I ended up breaking the fast the next day. Now, here's what's interesting. Because of that, I had dropped dramatically. 241, 242 the day before I started the fast, down to 236 in two days. So I had lost seven pounds out of the gate. <laughs> Just came out swinging, lost a bunch of weight, which obviously that wasn't all fat. That wasn't the good stuff. That was just a bunch of water weight. But what's annoying is as of today when I measured in a week later, I'm right back at 241. (laughs) I know I'd been drinking water the whole time I was hydrating, but what was the point of completely starving myself and going through all that pain if I was going to lose zero pounds over the course of that week, right? There's probably much easier ways to lose zero pounds and just maintain weight, which is where I'm at now. All right. Okay. Leads to the conclusions. It's getting long already. I'm going to end it here. Is that here's why I'm going to stop. I'm not going to do any more of these long three, five day, seven day fasts, or even a 30 day because it was the, the mentality of it was incorrect where I'm at right now for two reasons. One, no quick fixes. They just, they shortcuts are actually longer tortoise in the hair. So it sounds good in theory, just knock it out 30 days, 30 pounds, be at my goal weight and then move forward. But who knows the side effects and do I really want to try, especially with this most recent one that I just discovered half the week in pain, hungry, feeling that way, the other half not and not eating a lot, just going along. But I ended in the same place that I started. Why? Whereas I had a pretty good process going at the beginning of this thing where literally I would just eat my normal meals, sausage, as long as it's the right type of food, eat till I'm full once or twice a day, OMAD or two meals a day, and then exercise. And I was trying, starting to incorporate more exercise because I am very sedentary with the virtual job that I have. And so it was like, let's add more exercise. In. And that alone was getting me into ones and twos and ketosis and to autophagy. And I was doing really well on that. That's pretty much it. Carnivore keto and trying to get more activity, 10,000 steps a day, uh, heavy hands almost every day if I can, and just do that. That's what I'm doing. Talk to you guys next week.